Hello everybody and a very warm welcome back to Tony North Eastern and here we are we're back at the bench and as you can see I am soldering up the cables on these PM2 gauge master switch points uh, they're solenoid based um, basically you, you follow the instructions to what you get with the points but um, I've just made it simpler for myself by adding colour codes to all the cables as it were as you can see there on my own drawing the A, C, D, E, F, B is actually on the point motor itself so it's quite straightforward to follow it's just that I prefer to have different cables um, different colour cables so I know exactly where they're going when I fit the point motor to the baseboard so I'm just putting in the pink common now the pink common actually goes to the frog on the point hang on let's add that and this yellow one will eventually end back to the control panel. Now as you can see I tin the cables first, dip them in the flux. I've already gone across these connections with a little bit of solder already so it's just a case of just putting the solder and iron onto the cable and then giving them a dab of heat and then that should be it and there you go so let's just uh, have a quick recap of what these cables do so these two So here's a closer look on how I have drawn it out for myself. As you can see it's always been green or brown. Uh, for A, C is either grey or white. It's mostly grey. Uh, all depends on the cable I have available. And as long as the centre two is always blue and red and then we have the pink common and it's either always been yellow or yellow and red and uh, for one I've actually used orange as long as the colours are totally different to anywhere else in the panel then they shouldn't get mixed up and here's my switch supply So let's have a quick recap of what all these cables do. Um, this one, this grey, is one that fires the solenoid across either way, and these are the switch wires for the solenoid to go either way. These two cables in the centre will eventually go back to either the buzz bar or if I can pick it up on the track but I hope these be long enough to fit to the buzz bar like I said they're, they're all colour coded and this one I think I've already mentioned will go back to the frog on the point so there we have it, our six cables and um, as you can see on the drawing I've marked all the cables colours on the drawing here um, which does help and. Uh, and this is the actual switch in the panel but we'll go on to that in a minute so we've got our point motor let's go and fit it right so here we are I have managed to fit that point motor and as you can see I've used a little tiny piece of plastic it's two mil thick and what this does it holds the pin in the centre of the two solenoids and uh, if, so if you measure the width 
in between you can cut a piece and then just drill a 0.8mm hole in the center and that should hold and stay in there and keep the pin center to the actual point um, yeah so let's uh, have a look what it looks like on the top and this is what I've done to support the pin on the top so I've got a clamp there and it's actually holding the pin at the base which keeps it permanently upright while you put the two screws in underneath and also we have a little piece of 0.8 cable there which keeps the slide rails in the center as well so everything just seems to line up um, perfectly uh, you could use a crocodile clip I'm sure that wouldn't hurt might be even better actually because you can get right into the into the uh, right into the base of the pin yeah so that is point number 81 installed so next thing to do is to test it to make sure that it works so we'll just remove the clamp and the cable and what I'll do is I'll put my hand underneath and pull out the spacer and we'll just make sure that that moves freely and it does so the next thing we're going to do is put some power on it and see if, if it works so we're now going to test the solenoid just to make sure that it's working so I'm using this old Hornby transformer it's got 15 volt output so that should be enough to throw the solenoid as you can see we've got the switch wire which is the grey which we mentioned earlier and these are to throw it one way or the other so that seems to be working so I'm quite happy with that so I can now put all the cables um, back to the control panel so the cables don't go directly to the control panel otherwise I'd need uh, well for that one nearly 10 meters length of cables so what I do is I bring them down from the point which is over there and then bring them to a terminal block and then the cables run off to the control panel. Uh, this is point 79 but it's 79 A and B and that's for the crossover points at the platforms on Jara Road which is these two here. As you can see I've been adding some and coupling ramps. Now these are Picos um, because I'm quite a long way away from the <laughs> control panel at this end of the layout so I need some sort of uncouplers um, at the station. I mean I'll not be doing that much shunting but it's just so that the loco can uncouple run around the three coach and then couple back up again So once you're happy with it, it's just a case of cutting the pin as close to the point base as you can. And then you're ready to go. Finally, I just want to quickly show you where all the cables are now gone. So the, the green, the grey, and on this point, which is the orange will go back to the control panel. The blue and the red have gone to this block here which will then go to the buzz bar which is here. The pink one which is the common for the frog marries up with 
the black one here which comes down from the frog there and that one goes up through that beam and then onto the frog which is here right so we've installed our points now it's time to do some work on the control panel so here we have five sets of what I call tails one two three four five uh, which run all the way back to where we've just come from um, some of these lengths are at least eight meters long um, going to a terminal block and then from then on going to the point mortar so what we're going to do now is concentrate on putting these into the terminal blocks and then wiring them up to our switches 79 82 83 I've still got 80 and 81 to drill holes into so basically I just want to show you where they go when they come into the control panel. So as we've just fitted point 79 earlier in the video we shall look at the cables for 79. So we have our common return which is the grey and the two switch wires green and orange. Now it should have been a yellow but I've run out of yellow so I've decided to use an orange but I've marked it down in the book as the switch wires so um, for future reference if anything goes wrong with that point I know that the orange is one of the switch wires as long as I've made a note of it so the grey cable will come in and go into this bank here as a common return and then from here where we've got the red cables I will shall then uh, run a cable from here up to the switch which is there number 79 and as for the green and yellow or the green and orange will go into this terminal block and then they will make their way up to the switch as well find it there so you're probably wondering what's controlling it all. Well, I have here a model in electronics capacitor discharge unit which throws out 25 volts. Um, it's probably one of the best ones on the market at the moment. Spare one here. So there you go. So that's what it's kicking out. 25 volts. And that's going to replace uh, that one. So yeah, it's quite a good um, capacitor discharge unit, especially for the distance that it's got to throw the actual point motor so that operates that bank of 30 plus points so the next thing to do is to start putting the cables in as you've noticed I have identified them as well I've given them numbers so when I put in 79 I'll put it in as A and B because there is does uh, operate two points because um, that's the two points in Jarrah Road where it crosses over from one side of the track to the other from platform to platform part of the uh, return loop so that's what we're going to do next we'll put all the cables in and we'll see if it's working So the toggle switches I'm using are an on-off switch and they're sprung loaded. You can get them with six terminals 
or you can get them with three terminals like number 78 here. Uh, the reason why I've got six terminals on there, at some point I want to wire up a couple of LEDs just to let me know that um, I've thrown the points in one direction or the other. But uh, I will do that when every single point has been wired up because um, there's still loads and loads to do, especially on the other side of the panel here. So I'd just like to show you this before I put the cable into a terminal block. As you can see I've uh, labelled it up, 79 A and B, and I've also tinned the end uh, with some solder before it goes into the terminal block. It just gives that a little bit extra contact adhesion once the screw has buttoned it up. So we shall put that away comes in there nice and neatly and that's one cable down six left to go so that is point 79 done as you can see I've got the yellow on the top and the orange on the bottom like I've done throughout um, but that may have to change depending on how they switch on the actual board itself so let's just see if it works so I've powered up the transformer the capacitor discharge unit is on so let's just see if that works we'll just flick the switch and see if we can hear something over at Jarrah Road so I'm flicking it that way which means that these two points should be closed. So let's go and have a look. So as you can see, both points are closed for crossing over. So it can't cross over from one to the other. So that's closed there and closed there. So we'll just flick it the other way and see if it opens up. So we'll just fire it across towards me. You've heard them go off, so let's have another look. And as you can see, both points are open, so the train now can cross over from one side to the other. So there you have it. We've wired in one of the points for the Jarrah Road branch. And as you can see, I've still got a few more left to do. One, two, three, four, yeah, four more to do because that's a joint point. Joint point? <laughs> right, so there you go. So I hope you guys have learned something from uh, the, uh, this video and uh, hopefully next time we'll concentrate a lot more on Jarrah Road because um, Jarrah Road is going to be a little bit more than just the station. So join me then and uh, we'll see how it turns out and what's actually going to happen in this area. So that's all from me. Thanks again for watching and I do appreciate your comments so if you feel free to leave a comment I'm sure I'll get back to you. Until next time, stay safe and enjoy your model railways. Bye for now. Bye.